Mice of the Herringbone, Chapter Two, Stowaways. Now, whispered Charles, Oliver followed, his tail dragging. The two mice slipped into a little boat just as Captain Cragg began cranking it down into the water. Charles didn't like the way the waves slapped against the skiff, but he held on to a rusty nail and sent Oliver a weak grin. Big Tom and O'Grady loosened the ropes and signaled to the captain above them. Ah, oh, said Barnacle. Keep your squawking parrot quiet, muttered Big Tom. The bird flapped over and beat his wings on Tom's nose. Hee hee, laughed O'Grady. Get him off of me, O'Grady, growled Tom, afore I wring his neck. Hee hee, that'll be enough, Barney. Old Grady took a swig of his soda water. Big Tom's a mighty bad sport. Better leave him be. The skiff slipped out into the moonlight. As it rounded the island, Charles peered through a crack. The nine lives lay several yards ahead. Her, her sails were rolled up and her golden lantern shone across the waves. O'Grady seemed to know just where to go. He steered the skiff into the wide shadow cast by the ship and let it drift below an open window. They waited in the darkness, barely rippling the water. Before long, Charles heard voices. He nudged his shivering friend. Come in, a deep purring voice sort of, deep purring sort of voice said. Ah, oh, Mr. Calico, please be seated. Thank you, Admiral. So tell me, Mr. Calico, do you believe we're getting any closer to the Klondike? Well, sir, I'd, I'd indeed like to think so, though we haven't come up with a stitch of gold yet, sir. Ah, well, sighed the Admiral. As they say, a stitch in time saves nine. Perhaps in this case, the nine lives. Ha, ha, ha. Yes, sir, Mr. Calico's voice was polite. The Admiral went on. I do hate to disappoint your our queen, but some more men on the job and put some more men on the job and offer a reward. Start searching again first thing tomorrow morning. Yes, sir, that we will, sir. O'Grady giggled as they sat outside in the shadows. Shh, Big Tom pushed off from the ship. Here's those guys going across there to listen in on the cats. I was only thinking ahead, whispered O'Grady. He took a long drink of soda water. Just then, Charles saw the parrot turn his head. Those beady eyes were staring at something. Oh no, he thought. We'd better... But Barney was already flapping door toward, down toward them. Caw! Keep your half-wit bird still, scolded Tom in a hoarse whisper. He'll give us away. Oliver, jump for it, cried Charles. Oliver squeaked in alarm, but the parrot had already snatched them up in its claws. Why, looky what Barney's caught himself now. Stowaways. O'Grady's eyes gleamed. He, he, he. Big Tom eyed the two mice, looking interested. Stowaways? Charles wondered if they would make it even one, make even one mouthful for the huge dog. Why, we gotta treat our mousy guest to some soda water, ain't we, Tom? Whispered O'Grady. Give him to me, Barney. He plucked Charles and Oliver from, the, from Barney's claws and stuffed them into his half-empty bottle. Then he corked it shut and hurled it over the water. Enjoy your drink, mateys. Ker plop. The bottle dropped into the sea and began to sink. Inside, Oliver splashed frantically in the soda water. Help, he cried, help, help. Stop it, Oliver, scolded Charles, bobbing alongside. You're just making a lot of fizz, and we haven't time for that. What are we gonna do? Why, well, we've got to get that cork out, of course, and swim back to the surface. Now you just do what I do. Charles leaned to one side and so did Oliver. The bottle flipped over. Here they are in the bottle. Oh my. Immediately they were covered with soda water, but they landed on the cork face down. Push, bubbled Charles. He braced himself in the bottle's neck and thrust downward with all his might. Oliver joined him in the struggle, but it was hard getting leverage in such tight quarters. Soon Charles was out of breath and both had to bob up for air. The bottle flipped over again, splashing a great deal of soda water up Oliver's nose. He choked and wheezed. At last he sobbed, it's no use, we're sunk. Clink, Charles cocked his head. My friend, he said, it sounds as if we just hit bottom. He turned and glanced through the glass. Look, Oliver, look where we've landed. Probably someplace terrible. On an octopus? No, it's gold. The treasure. We found the wreck of the Klondike. Charles dove down through the soda water for a closer look. Above him, Oliver muttered, a lot of good it's going to do us, or the queen either. 
Charles peered through the thick glass at the bottom of the bottle. Gold coins, gold rings, gold necklaces. What a fortune! He bobbed back up to tell Oliver, but his friend had turned pale. He looked almost white. Really, Oliver, what is it? asked Charles. He stared out into the water and his jaw dropped open. A shark, yes, and it was coming right at them.